So hi Arijit and welcome on Europedia. Hello, hello sir. Okay, so nice Arijit, let you. me let me thank you first uh, for coming forward voluntarily to share your selection, and uh, let you. me congratulate you also for your selection in PhD program in uh, the prestigious university in Italy, Calabria University, and you are from computer science background. And uh, yes. I'll be uh, interacting with you, uh, Arijit, and uh, I'll be knowing uh, through you many things, which uh, eventually will be helpful for students to, you know, take the decision for their higher education. And we have very less uh, uh, interactive session uh, with the students who got selected in Italy. So I'm very sure uh, students are going to get something new flavor today uh, through this interaction. So I come to uh, you only, Arijit, and uh, please tell us about your academic background. Whatever you want to share with us, please uh, share your academic background. Sure. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Vijayendra, sir, for giving me this uh, platform to share my experience. So I started uh, my uh, computer science journey way back uh, in uh, 2012 I, when I completed my graduation in computer science, uh, BSc in computer science from University of Calcutta. And after that, uh, I also did my MSc uh, in 20, 2014 to 2016. Uh, after that, uh, I was wor also working in several different different places. And uh, meanwhile, I was also keep on trying to uh, having an MTech degree because I did not have any uh, research component in my uh, MSc. Uh, I mean, significant research con uh, contribution or any kind of con uh, component. Due to which I thought of uh, doing MTech. Uh, which will be uh, helping me to um, either get a good job or uh, maybe I'll be diverted. I mean, I'll be getting a good uh, research exposure. So I was not decide, uh, de decided at that time, uh, okay, so if I uh, join, then uh, certainly, I, certainly I need to do a uh, PhD afterwards. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyways, uh, during this MTech, uh, due to have uh, a good... Uh, ...professors as my uh, research guide and all, uh, they kind of motivated me straight, uh, during this uh, lockdown period also. I got a little bit of demotivation, but they were really, really helpful uh, due to which uh, I completed my uh, MTech uh, in IT in 2021. Uh, and uh, uh, my CGPA in uh, MTech, uh, I, uh, I had 8.13. Uh, and uh, as I was a non-IITN, uh, neither my bachelor's degree or master's degree was from IITN, neither I did BTEC. So I was really speculative about getting a opportunity in PhD anywhere. I mean, uh, even in India also, some places do not allow the people who are not having B.Tech background. Mm -hmm. So uh, although I had always uh, this wish to teach and I was teaching in a college mm -hmm. so uh, before joining Imtech. So what did I do? I uh, uh, joined again in a college uh, after completion of my Imtech. I, worked, I was working there for six months mm -hmm. and uh, by the virtue, maybe I got an opportunity uh, in IIT Gohati uh, for a junior research fellow uh, position. Mm -hmm. uh, and my domain of interest has always been IoT, Internet mm -hmm. of Things, uh, mm -hmm. where I've been working extensively, mm -hmm. specifically in the communication part. So uh, I, uh, I was uh, do uh, doing that project there. Uh, it was a, a government funded project, of course. And after completion of that project, it was a short-term project of four months. Uh, then I got an, another opportunity uh, again back in my uh, university from where I did my MTech. Mm -hmm. And presently I'm working there. And while uh, working, I uh, got this uh, opportunity of uh, getting into PhD in abroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I mean, I'll be joining uh, maybe within two, three months. I'm not sure about the exact time, but yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Arijit, uh, so uh, knowing your journey, I want to ask you a couple of questions here. One is yes, like yes. when you thought of going for PhD program, then, you know, normally when students think of abroad foreign universities, they think of countries like uh, uh, USA or the countries in Europe, like Germany and all. We get very less, uh, you know, uh, interested candidates for countries like Italy. So I want to ask you, like, uh, what kind of uh, opportunities are existing in Italy? And when I'm asking this, my question is uh, related to the kind of scholarships which students can get, how much is the fee structure or something. Uh, we have some idea about uh, German, Germany universities, public universities are there, uh, but less idea about Italy. So please uh, make us aware about the opportunities in Germany for Indian, uh, sorry, Italy for Indian students. Sure, sure. So uh, the thing is, uh, I, uh, 
started uh, application uh, i mean I, be, just before uh, joining my uh, i mean b- b- before starting applying to these uh, countries in abroad i kind of decided in way back in 2020 around 2021 i decided that uh, if i am going to do phd i'll be doing it from europe for sure okay. there is no doubt about it uh, and uh, that in inform- formation uh, from eurpedia that uh, that is the, i mean the least amount of money you need to spend in order to get into europe i got it from eurpedia platform only at that time and uh, basically uh, that's how i planned my uh, entire uh, cv making journey you can say like so i uh, had my degrees with me but i did not have uh, research experience much and teaching experience was also kind of only a guest lectureship so i made sure that i have a publication so uh, the task task i did in uh, i mean the, the project that i did in my masters got published mm-hmm. uh, in a in a uh, journal uh, sorry you know as a big book chapter uh, mm-hmm. it was uh, it, it was presented uh, in a conference but later it was published as a book chapter mm-hmm. and uh, later uh, uh, i mean i also ensured that uh, again for six months i worked in a uh, full time uh, as an assistant professor in a college so teaching uh, as a ta if you want to work somewhere if you have any prior teaching experience that helps uh, okay. this your cv actually these things gets highlighted in your cv and uh, as i do not did not have any professional research experience that's why i thought of doing a uh, junior research fellowship jobs like grf positions there are a lot of grf positions keeps on coming in different uh, central government as well as state government institutes mm-hmm. now it is even public uh, research institutes and, sorry private research institutes and private uh, universities uh, do uh, have those type of vacancies mm-hmm. it comes up with different advertisements at times mm-hmm. so if you are using linkedin wisely uh, mm-hmm. then you can definitely get notified about these things mm-hmm. now uh, uh, i uh, did those two uh, grf uh, jobs uh, and uh, these three four things act- actually it, i mean whatever the cv it was it actually uh, you know strengthen my cv a little bit mm-hmm. and uh, getting into europe uh, uh, is uh, a challenge where uh, in us or uk uh, you will see a lot of people uh, just after completion of their masters usually get uh, any positions very easily i mean mm-hmm. compared compared to europe uh, european countries what happens that in europe they not only require uh, a good uh, cv in terms of good grades and good universities mm-hmm. but also they see that how much experience do you carry okay. whether it's teaching or, or research or any kind of professional other type of industry experience as well or not mm. so talking spe- specifically talking about italy i have uh, uh, when i st- uh, started applying i started applying in italy way back in 2022 this time only this time around i started application so almost one year now so um, initially there were uh, universities uh, who were asking for different types of requirements were there so for example i'm giving you a name of two universities now so one is Politecnico de Milano that is a famous uh, research uh, engineering in, uh, institute there so I, i think it is the number one research institute in uh, sorry engineering institute in uh, italy uh, there is a uh, university of uh, torino or uh, Politecnico, uh, Politecnico di torino these are some of the institutes who requires uh, gre and uh, ielts score okay in italy these are these are two three institutes who requires uh, gre and ielts score although it's not uh, you know you do not require a high band or high gre score but minimum pass course will be all right for that so that is one thing but other than these institutes all the institutes do not require either ielts or gre or any score the, no, none of the universities requires any score so you can apply there for sure like any indian any pakistani any any, any uh, subcontinent people, uh, countries people or any people from the world uh, can apply there mm-hmm. now after applying uh, in that institute uh, uh, there are some institutes who requires some kind of fee for example uh, i have seen that uh, universities from uh, charges from 5 to 50 euros it, it depends upon which university you are applying mm-hmm. but p- even public universities also sometimes they charge for 10 euros 20 euros for the applic- as an application fee mm-hmm. okay but uh, some of the universities do not even charge that money as well like uh, the university where i got this position mm-hmm. they didn't charge any money it was a free application mm-hmm. so uh, i applied there as well mm-hmm. uh, so they require uh, these things your cv your uh, transcripts your uh, research ex- uh, sorry your uh, research experience or any publication if you have before mm-hmm. so they they give marks on basis of that of mm-hmm. course and they also asked for uh, these uh, 
like uh, if, if if you uh, have any uh, work experience specific other other than your research experience those things and uh, majorly majority on the basis of these uh, components they evaluate your things and about these components gives you 50% okay it is more or less 50% 40 to 50% marks of uh, your pre evaluation okay other 60% marks carries uh, uh, i mean the research proposal carries the rest of the 60% of the marks okay. so research proposal is the most important thing here so in uh, italy if you want to get into uh, you make sure your research proposal proposal is bang on and for that you need to contact your professor so what happens most of the time uh, if you apply uh, in uh, different uh, institutes in uh, italy uh, you apply randomly uh, okay. because they do not mention that you did not, uh, you need to contact to the professor and after that only you can get the position uh, so people starts uh, applying randomly and most of the time they get failed and all even that happened to me as well mm. but uh, even if you try contacting a lot of professors sometimes they also say that okay you just apply but to be honest uh, the actual rule is in uh, italy that all the scholarships whatever is coming that first comes to that particular university from the government mm -hmm. but the government uh, do not give that money directly to the professor rather, rather they give the money that professor through the university mm -hmm. so anyways at the end of the day the call uh, call of taking a student uh, will be under the hand of the professor not under under the hand of the university Okay. So most of the time, what will happen that uh, most of the research group uh, already decided whom to take or whom not to take. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's the thing that uh, you need to apply way uh, ahead before you know you on the, this day you are going or on this particular season you are going to Italy. Okay. For example, if you want to apply in the month of uh, June, then uh, I mean uh, you should be prepared by six months before of that. So okay. uh, if you if you are communicating with a professor for like like. Two to three months uh, regarding this admission process, or keep on mailing and uh, you know, kind of uh, intimidating him that okay, you are a particular guy who's having same research exposure to that thing. Then that professor may or may get uh, you know turn up to you, and then uh, he or she will be uh, you know accepting your uh, uh, your uh, request. Uh, I was lucky that I got a very good uh, you know uh, response. I mean, uh, the most of the Italian professors do response. But uh, most of the time, their response has a negative response. Mm -hmm. So you will not be in doubt that okay, they, whether he should he will be taking me or not. But uh, this time, uh, the professor uh, he did not have any student with him, maybe. So mm -hmm. he found my uh, CV is very much suitable to his profile. So he accepted me there and there. Okay. But usually, uh, the ideal thing is that one should uh, you know apply to the professor, mm -hmm. and uh, he or she will be asking you to write a research proposal on on a particular topic. Although he or she will be taking an interview before uh, the formal interview, but uh, at the, at that time you will be you will be having that mutual understanding that what on what topic you should write the research proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, there are universities who uh, uh, comes up with the different vacancies. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so there are universities who comes up with vacancies uh, uh, with the particular topic, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, if the university is not coming up with a particular topic, then you will be having the liberty. This time, I was having a particular topic. So, uh, I had to write the research proposal on that topic only because my scholarship will be based on that. But uh, in case some universities is allowing you to choose your own research topic, then you will be having the free hand to decide on what research topic you want to write. And if you and your supervisor uh, uh, is agreeing to write on the same thing, then it will be the best thing to happen. Okay. So, Arijit, now whatever information you provided me, I will uh, put the things in order what I understood. So, you said that uh, yes. a couple of university may require GRE, TOEFL, IELTS or something, though the criteria yes, yes. or score may not be very, very high, but yes, yes, uh, they yes. need it and not many university require it. Uh, no, 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 no. So, maybe some universities don't require these scores like uh, IELTS, GRE and all. And also, you said that, uh, you know, their the scholarships and everything is in the hands of professors. So I think getting uh, in touch with the professors is really helpful in Italy. Is that what you said, uh, Arijit? Yes, I mean, yes. Uh, I mean, you will be getting, most of the time, you will be getting replies. That's for sure. Whether he or she will be able to take you or not, they will clearly mention that. So Arijit, yes, now, yes, now we, it time. comes to very important point is like how a student can approach a professor. What are the means? Like you mentioned about LinkedIn also. So is this through mail or is it through LinkedIn? How to approach a professor? What is the best way to do that? Okay, okay. 
so uh, the thing is uh, i applied in italy through uh, uh, this uh, mail the, the mm-hmm. traditional mail procedure like you okay. you you will be uh, introducing yourself there and what you are doing and all you will be attaching your cv uh, if you want to attach any i mean if you are ready with any research proposal you can attach that and if you, if you want to attach your transcripts you can attach your transcripts there and also uh, you just write on the uh, particular uh, letter that uh, i am this person uh, i went through your profile i found these are the research areas matching with my research area mm-hmm. i am having this type of research experience with me mm-hmm. uh, so and so forth and uh, if you are interested uh, taking a particular student right now as i can see there is a vacancy in your university uh if you want to take me then please uh, reply me back mm. okay i'm waiting for your eagerly i'm eagerly waiting for your reply so all these uh, things you can uh, write in a nice manner with without any grammatical mistake or uh, proper way and impo- important thing is uh, you schedule your mails you do not just send the mail at the middle of the night okay. so better that you schedule your mail according to the italian time so Okay. you can you should schedule your mail like within i mean if you are applying at uh, like uh, in a university uh, so on sunday or saturday you should not send a mail mm-hmm. you should send a, a mail at the time like for example uh, uh, tuesday morning mm-hmm. monday also sometimes a lot of mails gets junk on their inboxes so tuesday morning like for example 10 am to 12 am onwards at mm-hmm. italian time so 10 am to 12 am italian times means it's 2:30 pm to 4:30 pm indian time or 1:30 pm to 3:30 pm so mm-hmm. at, at, around afternoon you can send the mail mm-hmm. on tuesday so it is the i think it is the best time for me it happened in that way but not all the time you will be finding in this way mm-hmm. acha this mail will be received at that at that side but not necessary that reply will be coming then and there Mm-hmm. uh maybe some professor will be replying looking at the mo- uh, at the mail at that moment only mm-hmm. uh, or else you may get the email uh, reply on middle of the night as well so mm-hmm. because they will reply according to their time okay mm-hmm. so you also always keep on checking and with, uh, within every one week you keep on uh, you know uh, rebuttal that mail if you are not getting any reply so for example today you send the mail so after one week if you are not uh, you haven't got any reply you mm-hmm. just uh, send a rebuttal that uh, this is uh, regarding the last mail which i wrote uh, any research opportunity so i am eagerly waiting for your reply mm-hmm. i can understand your busy schedule but uh, if you have any time please reply back so like that you can uh, write a rebuttal mail mm-hmm. so that will help you to get as many replies as possible that that work completely work talking about linkedin uh, you make your profile updated as much as possible mm-hmm. okay even if the professor i mean we can't judge it because mm-hmm. because sometimes professor do not scrutinize the mail by himself or cv by himself rather mm-hmm. he or she gives uh, gives that to some uh, some of his assistants like mm-hmm. maybe a postdoc student or a phd student to see through the particular cv and all mm-hmm. so they will might might have a look on the your uh, linkedin profile mm-hmm. uh, if you have any other type of uh, uh, research profile like if you have any uh, google scholar id if you have any scopus uh, id index or if you have any a github github profile like in computer science github profile is a very important thing so mm. if you have such other profiles also keep uh, it updated mm. so that uh, nothing goes uh, unseen so mm. if you are claiming something in your cv or in your cover letter or in your uh, research proposal mm. uh, not in research proposal sorry in your cover letter or in your cv uh, which is not updated in your uh, any any of the, your social uh, profile uh, rather work profiles in linkedin or github or any other research uh, profile then that creates a little doubt like how much genuine that person is how much updated that person is mm-hmm. so make it sure that things are synced and okay. updated so so one of the very very important information i got from you is like uh, scheduling the mails i never thought yes, of this yes. earlier and never heard of this earlier very good input arijit from your side like uh, it makes sense that don't send on saturday sunday and send it in on tuesday not even monday uh, send it schedule it in such a way that it hit, hits his office Uh, in his mailbox it hits at 10 am uh, as per his time so that is a wonderful information uh, arijit and it will optimize their uh, you know mailing also that is a very good input for students and also uh, you mentioned something about uh, updation of the linkedin profiles and all so uh, mm-hmm. how important it is for students to have their linkedin profiles because if somebody is uh, uh, you know planning to apply abroad and catching uh, with some professor how important is it for a student to have his linkedin profile yeah 
so uh, the thing is uh, everybody can make a linkedin profile it's not a you know really a hard task to do uh, it's just like making a google account or just like making a gmail yes. account okay yes. it's very easy but the but the important thing is that there are a lot of sections and subsections subsections are given in a linkedin profile like you can customize that according to you mm-hmm. or according to your uh, credibilities mm-hmm. so two three things are important whatever the information you have in your cv you directly update that in your linkedin profile that will be there like your education qualification educational qualifications your uh, work experiences mm-hmm. uh, your publications and all if you want to give it there that is fine that that will be there for sure mm-hmm. other than that important thing is if you have any endorsements mm-hmm. so endorsement works a lot i mean if uh, let us assume you have collaborated with uh, some uh, i mean very famous research supervisors uh, mm-hmm. from abroad or some india from let us assume uh, from iits or iisc mm-hmm. who is a very renowned personality well known in all over the world mm-hmm. so you have collaborated with him just request him to endorse you in linkedin mm-hmm. so your linkedin profile will be highlighted because of his in- endorsement okay so that is a very good thing also make sure if you have any skills you update that key skills by giving a, a short exam in linkedin it takes like 10 minutes a short exam uh, to make sure that okay that particular skill you have it is verified by linkedin that yes this person is actually carrying that skill okay mm-hmm. so these are some of the things we, which makes your linkedin profile really good and every student should have it nowadays especially specifically i am from the domain of computer science and it Mm-hmm. Uh, I really recommend that everyone one should have a LinkedIn profile as well as a GitHub profile. Wonderful, Arjit. Now uh, coming to your selection in this particular university, in this particular course, uh, Calabria University. Yes. Your... Got uh, selected there. So, can you share your experience of selection in this university? I mean. when did you think of uh, applying in this university could you approach professors for this university and how you got uh, selected into this particular university so share your experience with us for this particular selection okay so uh, talking about this particular selection uh, it was not little uh, not, not a much different to the other universities but the procedure is this that uh, uh, one needs to uh, first th- 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 there is a list of uh, you know projects and uh, project titles given like research proposal titles are given uh, and also given the research supervisor's name there so that comes with the particular uh, 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 advertisement mm-hmm. like a job notification i mean like a phd notification comes in our iits or iss similarly that comes out from a university by the way i would also like to inform uh, all the opportunities gets published in one particular website uh, better that everybody should go and check that website regularly so you need not need to visit every uh, particular university. uh, university's website in it the name of that university is uh, bandi.miur.it hmm. b a n d i can can you can you repeat that yeah bandi yes 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 b a n d i .miur hmm. .it okay so all Achha, kind of open, uh, opportunities will come there yeah i'm tell, telling you so this particular uh, website is having uh, all that uh, like post doc doctoral opportunities other type of uh, professional research opportunities whatever comes under the government of italy all those uh, notifications comes in this website only okay uh, make sure that you open this particular website in google chrome not in firefox okay. in google chrome there will be a google translator which will convert that italian language to english okay so that you can see i mean go through easily Uh, of all the positions okay, okay. there are uh, drop downs through which you can select your particular area your particular university whether there is any opening or not you make sure that you are seeing that latest uh, job uh, advertisements and all mm-hmm. so th- those things may, uh, are given there so i also came to know about this opportunity from there only so there were only 51 vacancies mm-hmm. in entire university and eight vacancies in this department department of uh, ict or information communication technology Hmm. so i uh, straight away applied there there were no application fee with my research proposal cv and passport and other some documents transcripts and all hmm. and i even before applying that uh, i talked to that professor so the moment i mailed after 8 days maybe i got a reply from him for a google meet hmm. so he talked to me over google meet and uh, then uh, uh, he we, we kind of mutually decided a research proposal Uh, so my professor was very helpful uh, to me supportive to me that even in weekends he 
uh, brought out times for me to have uh, Google Meet discussions and made sure that a particular research proposal uh, made a very proper way. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually what happened that uh, particular, uh, my uh, CV and uh, this particular research proposal got selected. So there were marks given, 20 marks was given on uh, this particular, uh, uh, I mean, uh, maximum mark, marks was 20 in this research proposal and maximum marks was 10 in this CV. Mm -hmm. And out of 30, you need to get at least 21 mm -hmm. to get qualified for interview. Mm -hmm. And in any university in uh, Italy, that happen, uh, these things happen in this way only. Like, there are, like, like in India also, we find out a particular merit list. Same thing happens there as well. So at the cutoff marks was 21. I got 26. So I was called for the interview. And in the interview date, uh, I mean, it was an open interview kind of thing, I can say, because uh, in a Google Meet, uh, all the like 28 candidates who were called for the interview uh, joined together. Hmm. Okay, so maybe almost 70 people applied, 28 or 27 candidates were called in the interview hmm. and uh, people were taking interview one after the other and in the interview specifically, uh, mostly professors were asking for the research proposal. Their main concern was uh, whatever the things you wrote on your research proposal, hmm. whether you can justify those things at the time of the interview. That was the main target of having an interview. Otherwise, uh, most of the th time, uh, they already screen through the CV and uh, they know how much genuine that person is. Mm. So, uh, the, the, the uh, three people were there at the interview bench. Mm. They uh, evaluated the profile and finally, uh, they gave the interview round marks. So, total out of uh, eight people, I my name came on fourth. Okay. Uh, so, that is how I got selected. Okay. So, Arijit, now uh, coming to very important part, which the students uh, want to know. Number one, in Italy, do they need to know the language Italian or English will do? English is fine. English is fine in uh, side of an, any university. All the uh, people uh, are uh, coming from different uh, regions because these universities contain most of the foreign people. Okay. Like, yes, of course, uh, the, uh, the population of uh, Italians are there uh, for sure inside of the university. But... Almost in some universities, the population is of 20%, 30% of foreigners. Mm. So uh, uh, in this particular area where I'll be going, it is the southern part of Italy. In southern part of Italy, it's a challenge. Like in northern part of Italy, even in the locals, you can talk to in, uh, talk to them in English and they will understand. But when, you, when it comes to the southern part of Italy, uh, for talking to locals, mm. better if you know Italian, uh, Italy. Uh, I mean, Italian language, rather. Mm. So, uh, which will help you to do the regular activities, regular day-to-day -day activities. So, if you want to purchase something in the grocery or you want to do some other type of task. So, those things actually uh, be easier if you know basic it Italian. Not a, like, fully-fledged thing, but, yeah, basic Italian you need to know. Okay. Now, Arijit, next part, which is very, very important, and that is uh, the finance. Like, uh, how much scholarship you will get there? And when uh, people go for PhD, they have also one thing in their mind that for how many years I need to do PhD and what scholarship I'll be getting. Is it possible for me to save some money in during PhD or not? So what is your answer to this? Compared to other countries, it's like uh, specifically US, okay. uh, uh, the PhD sometimes goes even five, six years, like India. Okay. Okay. Uh, if, uh, when it comes to UK, they take three to four, I mean, uh, three and a half to four years, UK, if I say so. Uh, uh, Germany also sometimes they take, but more majorly it happens in four years. But some countries uh, like uh, Italy, they have specifically mentioned that the course will be of three years. Okay. So within three years, you have to complete. Otherwise, your, I mean, your funding will be stopped. That is one thing. Second thing, uh, in some cases, what happens, you need to stop your PhD as well. Once your funding is stopped, your PhD is also kind of stopped. You, you, uh, how can you support yourself? Mm -hmm. Although the government is very good, they give some type of support. Uh, that's a different thing. That's a different story. I'll not get into that right now. Mm -hmm. ha, talking about the scholarship, uh, in this particular university, I am getting uh, 16,243 euros a year. Okay. Uh, and uh, at net around like 1,200 euros a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so the actual amount is uh, yet not decided, but yes, around 1200 euros, euros a month, okay. which is sufficient in Italy for sure. I mean, any part of Italy with 1200 euros, uh, even if you are uh, staying in Milan or Rome, you can easily, and one person can easily survive with 1200 euros. 
uh, which is not uh, easy when it comes to uh, northern uh, uh, countries. Like uh, if you are going to Scandinavian countries, the expense is higher, much higher okay. than this. So uh, that is, I mean, uh, the, the expense uh, and uh, you, uh, the scholarship that they pro uh, provide, it's balanced properly. Okay. So that nobody should be having any trouble. Okay. So as per what you said, Arijit, that PhD you can complete within three years. Three, they advertise it for three years. And you said uh, approximately 1200 euros is a scholarship per month you will be getting. So uh, will can you save also some money in that? Or what is the situation like 1200 euro is what? My latest information that one person's uh, expense in a month is around uh, 500 to 600 euros max. Okay. I mean, uh, it, it is it is the proper way if one, he uh, one uh, wants to spend. There is no end of spending. Like even okay. twelve hundred euros sometimes gets uh, less. But yes. uh, if if uh, somebody wants to spend it properly, properly means like uh, for example, a, a standard one uh, room apartment, Understood. a standard uh, uh, I mean standard uh, mm -hmm. bike or something. If he, he he or she wants to have any transportation facility. If he, he or she doesn't want to use any public transport, uh, all these things and grocery and all, uh, all together, including entertainment cost and all, I'm taking, uh, telling that 500 to 600 euros is uh, fine enough because uh, whatever the information I got from my uh, fellow, I'm not fellow exactly, rather uh, uh, the other people whom I know in Italy staying, uh, they are saying that this is enough actually. Okay. So that means 500 euros, 600 euro you can save also per month. Yes, 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 mm, yes. Can do that. Now, Arijit, coming to uh, post PhD opportunities, uh, when you will be completing your PhD, uh, Arijit, what kind of opportunities will explore for you after that? Okay, okay. So one thing I forgot to mention actually. So while PhD, it is mandatory in Italy, specifically who is holding this particular scholarship. I, I'm having the scholarship of PNRR scholarship. Mm. This is a particular name of the scholarship given by the government of Italy. There are other type of scholarships also uh, that they, uh, you know, give. So one of the important clauses in this scholarship or most of the scholarship is having a clause that while doing the PhD, at least three to maximum of 18 months, you can do your research with collaboration at abroad. Okay. So for example, uh, I am going there in Italy uh, because of my, uh, this particular topic, if I need to go outside, if it, rather, I do not need to, but rather I have to go outside and spend there for three to uh, 18 months. Depends how much time I need to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for uh, during that time, uh, the, uh, they will be paying you 50% uh, extra salary. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever the stipend you are getting, the scholarship you are getting, mm -hmm. they will give you even extra 50% uh, uh, on that. So if you are staying in Milan, for example, they are providing you 1400 euros, you'll be getting almost around uh, 2100 euros uh, while uh, you're pursuing your research abroad. Mm -hmm. Achha. When you are going uh, outside uh, of Italy, you will be having this opportunity to do good research collaboration in that country. Okay. So that uh, if you want to do postdoc there, that mm -hmm. avenue will be created now onwards only uh, when you are doing your PhD. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good opportunity, which is given exclusively by Italian government, I found, because uh, there are other uh, institutes, but there is nothing mandatory written there. But here in this Italy, most of the institutes uh, in their advertisement mention that you have to go at least for three to 18 months. Okay. So that's a very uh, new thing what I found. Yes. Arijit, you are BSc and MSc in computer science only. So as we know, opportunities in computer science, uh, especially in foreign uh, countries are more. What about uh, opportunities for those students who uh, graduate in other fields, like maybe science field, physics, chemistry, mathematics, or engineering field, like electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering. So what are the opportunities for these students in Italy? Okay, so when it comes to other engineering subjects, there are plenty of opportunities, to be honest, because nowadays the scenario is that uh, if in every sector, there is something, some kind of tech uh, intervention, every sector, whether, whether it's a mechanical engineering, civil engineering, any, any sector. So for example, uh, there is a thing called digital twin, which is extensively used in uh, civil engineering nowadays. Mm -hmm. So similarly in mechanical, in uh, other type of engineering also, you will find these things. 
now uh, there are th- uh, subjects called interdisciplinary subjects mm-hmm. which are uh, which, which are new to india actually if you see so it has always been there in europe and us and uk australia new zealand all these countries they were already having this mm-hmm. so i think the people who wants to study interdisciplinary research they should be going to uh, some of the countries outside india mm-hmm. where uh, they will be get, getting even more cutting edge technology exposure mm-hmm. which maybe i'm not sure although i i uh, didn't do any any kind of uh, full time research work uh, other than this uh, iit i didn't do every uh, i didn't explore every research institute in india but yeah i'm talking i can uh, assure that in every research institute in abroad you'll be getting uh, enough exposure in interdisciplinary research for engineering mm-hmm. talking about basic science if you have any programming language uh, then it helps because i'm g- giving you some of the subjects name like computational biology computational chemistry computational physics mm-hmm. so if you want to go into the theoretical area of computer science uh, theoretical mm-hmm. area of area of uh, physics chemistry or biology mm-hmm. uh, those are uh, some way or the other you know connected using this compu- uh, this subject called computational mm-hmm. bio, uh, bio biology and all there are subjects like bioinformatics genetic engineering mm-hmm. okay all these things are having some way or the other technology intervention so mm-hmm. if you if somebody is interested in these areas mm-hmm. uh, they can surely go because a lot of lot of uh, you know opportunities are there mm-hmm. so so arjit can you mention some of the very good universities in italy which indian students should explore of course of course so if one uh, wants to apply in uh, uh, italy Uh, i would suggest that uh, there are the, the best universities there are university of bologna which is the oldest university right now is in work uh, in italy so uh, uh, even in the world as well so it's, it's more than 1000 years old university so mm-hmm. university of bologna sapienza university of rome uh, politecnico di milano university of turin university of pisa university of uh, venice university of florence mm-hmm. uh, i mean these are the major uh, big universities uh, with good qs rankings mm-hmm. university of calabria is very good but the thing is uh, as it is a newer in uh, the list of universities it is having a lot of capability and all but uh, still uh, it is new due to which its ranking is not that high mm-hmm. but uh, maybe sooner or later it will also get its uh, what the position Absolutely. in the top list So so that's a, that's a wonderful Arjit a lot of information from your side and we have come to almost an end of this wonderful session I hope I have not Thank missed uh, uh, most important things I try to uh, uh, ask, uh, ask I I would just like to mention one thing I forgot to mention yeah. uh, this is an important thing actually uh, a lot of people also think about whether their bachelor's degree marks or bachelor's degree uh how much it affects into their phd yes, uh, yes. Uh, application and all yes so let me tell you first i didn't do do btech so i didn't have any four year course uh, mm-hmm. in my cv mm-hmm. and uh, in my bsc i got only 51.75% mm-hmm. not even first class okay mm-hmm. okay uh, so i believe that uh, rather focusing on the things which you do not have yes focus uh, on one things should things focus right. on the things which one can change at that present time yes yes So that is that is a very positive approach and positive way to see the things because that is true that uh, the moment students have very less in graduation they keep on you know thinking about that part which they don't have and uh, stop even putting effort on something which they can do and that is yes, my yes. experience also arijit like uh, there are opportunities i mean this uh, yes. world is uh, quite a big space for students and there are opportunities even if as you mentioned that if some place even gre and toefl is not required so they will be happy with your research experience whatever you had and you in the beginning you mentioned that your exposure in teaching and jrf uh, must have helped in this entire process also yes so, yes uh, students have one thing or the other in their hands and if they don't have they they can create those things uh, they can create that uh, you know impact in their entire selection process so that was quite a good uh, uh, and rich experience uh, arijit i had with you learned many things how to mail how to create linkedin profile and how to find out the opportunities in universities uh, in italy and many things i came to know about the uh, applications for italy universities in italy so i am very sure students who listen to this entire interaction they will get a fairly good idea uh, for the opportunities and uh, as you at the end said that uh, not only computer science but other branches also uh, and uh, can get very good opportunity so students will surely listen to that 
so let me again uh, thank you arijit for coming uh, forward and uh, you know thank giving you. this time and sharing this entire experience i'm very sure that thank you, you thank you students and i wish yeah you yeah it, it was a it was a really nice uh, talking to you sir uh, yeah. i'm really happy that uh, i got this platform to share my experience i think uh, most of the people uh, who is thinking of applying abroad they will have some kind of help with this video and they can uh, carry ahead yes in their uh, let me wish you all the very best for your career ahead research career arjit and look Thank forward you. to interact with you once again once you are sure, sure. in the middle of your phd right yeah yeah sure sure okay Thank you.